Howdy folks, Kevin here. In this video, I'm going to be looking at how to test a Vue.js application using WebDriver IO. The application we'll be testing is this regex generator, which we can use to generate regular expressions. And the way it works is you add in a few strings, something like foo, foobar, baz, foobaz, and it'll generate a regular expression that will match all of those. You can also go in and delete the strings or reset the entire flow. To test the app, I'll be using WebDriver.io, which I have several videos on if you're new to. I've gone ahead and set up a local folder with WebDriver.io installed and configured it through the configuration helper using the URL of this example website. Now I'll edit my test file and I'll call it basic.js. I'm using the Mocha test framework, so the first thing I'll do is add my describe and it blocks. And then using comments, I'll define a few more scenarios. OK, with the test setup and everything, we can get started. I'll start things off by getting a before each statement in here where we load the URL of the page. And so that uses WebDriverIO's browser.url command to load the root URL based off that base URL that we defined at the very beginning. The first test we have is pretty simple. It's saying that you should let you add a string. And if I jump over to the regex generator and I type in foo and then click the plus button, I get two bits of output that I want to test. The generated regex, I want to assert that that value is correct. And then the added strings, I'll also want to assert that there's only one string in there and that it matches the text I type. So let's get started by just adding a basic string using WebDriver IO commands. I'm going to want to store this string for later so that I can do assertions on it. So I'll say input text is equal to foo. And I'm going to use the set value command and pass in the selector of the input here and then the input itself. To get that selector, I've got my developer tools opened up. And looking at this example, there isn't a good ID on here nor a really unique class name. So it's a little bit more difficult to come up with a good selector here. Thankfully, this is the only input on the page that I can see. So I can just use an input element selector and set the type to text. So that's what I'll do. So we have an element selector combined with an attribute selector, checking that the attribute of type is equal to text. And that will match this element. If you ever want to verify this, you can actually go into the console and paste in your selector and use uh, two dollar signs. That's going to check for multiple elements on the page. See, we actually have two elements. Wasn't expecting that. Let's see. OK, so the other one, this technically is an input. It's kind of funny how they set that there. It's disabled, though. It's set to read only. So I could actually add a negative attribute class saying that the element doesn't have this attribute. Let's go ahead and do that. So I think what I can do is just tag on this not pseudo class, not, and then use another attribute selector. And this time only pass in the attribute name. I don't really care about the value. And you see it only returns one result now, which is our input. So I will update my selector to match that. In a minute, I'm going to want to move these elements into a simple page object to make it more easy to use throughout my test. But for now, I want to keep it pretty simple. OK, with the value set, we can now do our assertions. There are two things we need to get. The value from that input that we just didn't want to get. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll get rid of this not and pair up these attributes side by side and then come into my console again and double check that it works. So we only get the one. Now we are going to have a slash, then the foo, then the slash. So what I want to do is say that my expected output is going to be equal to foo with the slashes around it. I could go through some programmatic ways of doing this, but I find with tests, any sort of logic that you have add to your test is not the smartest thing. I prefer to keep as much logic as I can out of my tests because then you end up possibly introducing bugs to your tests because your logic is broken. So you can keep your tests overly simple and just define what you want the expected output to be. So down here, I can do my assertion. To do my assertion, I'm going to need to load my assertion framework. I don't have it installed yet, so I'll go ahead and install Chai. And then with that installed, I can come back up here, load Chai using the object destructuring syntax. And now I have it ready for my assertion. So I can come back down and say expect my output value to 
equal my expected output, and that should be enough to get this test running. I can use the command line utility just using npxwdio, but I want to try out this other tool that I've been building. This is a little UI for working with WebDriver IO. I'm going to add a new project, call it View Regex, and then add my folder. Let's see if this works. I'll run my tests. Okay, so I had an issue in here. So what I'm gonna do is go into my folder and check out error shots. Oh, it did not load the right page. So if I open up my console, you can see the URL that got passed in was incorrect. It was the base URL instead of the one with the um, full address. So let's go into here. Then if we go down to base URL, I think if I do a slash there, that might fix it. So I'll come back into my app and run it. Okay, that's better. I got a different error this time. Couldn't find the input. So I'll go back into my error shots and, ah, I forgot to actually click the button. Yeah, that would uh, make a lot of sense there. Okay, so I need to get the selector for that button. I can get that by using the plus sign because that's the only one that uses the plus sign. So once I set my value, I'm gonna call browser.click and I'll use star equals plus. Hopefully that triggers it to find a button with the text of plus inside of it. So I'll save this and run my test again. There we go, okay. So now it's passing after clicking the button. And one change we could make is validating that we have checked um, the full list of items to make sure that foo is on there. I'm just not sure I wanna to get to it right now. I think what I'm gonna do next is convert this over to a page object. So I'm going to create a new file. I'll save that file as just page.js. Then I need to go into my configuration file up to my exclude, and I'm going to exclude this page. I could use a glob selector here for my exclude, but I wanna keep it simple, so I'll just stick with that. Now I'm going to define a new class, we'll call it regex page, and then we're going to export that class. And we're gonna call new because we want to just do a single instantiation of this regex page so that we can use it right away inside of our um, test file. Then I'll load this into my test file. The first thing I wanna do inside my page is define a getter. If we jump over to the WebDriver IO documentation, I need to remember how this is written. This is the format that I'm looking for, get, and then the property name, and then you return the browser element. So we'll call this text input, and we're gonna use the dollar sign to get the element back from text input. And I'll copy over that selector from my test, and then save this file, come back over to my test, get rid of that selector, and change browser. And I wanna make sure I, ran, I set this all up correctly, so I'll come back into my app and run it and validate that it still passes. Okay, it's still passing, that's good. It means that I set up the exports and the require and all that, which is always, um, can always mess that up. Next, I'm gonna move my button. And since I'll be doing this a lot, I'm just gonna duplicate these lines. So I'll go back and forth and move these over. Okay, that's pretty good for this first test. Let's go ahead and move on to the second one. We'll start off this pretty similar to the way we started the other one. And because we're kind of be duplicating this function, let's go ahead and add it to our page object. If I jump back into the WebDriver IO documentation, you see I can just simply define the function name I want and then call the actions I want. So I'll call it add string. It's gonna take the text we wanna add. And then instead of using the page reference, we're gonna change that to this. So it's gonna set the text input to text value and then click the add button. We'll save that and we're gonna change this over. Just be add string. Now I can change that to foo and then maybe foo bar. And then in here, I'll get that value. And I'm gonna cheat by using the output from the generated regex. Okay, we'll save that and let's go back and run this fairly simple test. But it did pass, that's good. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is get these added strings and make sure they're correct. So I need to get the selector for this group. 
Again, there's no real good identifier here, but I can get it by the list group. So I'll clear out this console so I can come back up to the top. Then I'll use the double dollar sign and it's a class. So I just want to see if there's more than one of these list groups. So there is not. So I could use this class of list group on here, but I want to try something different. I'm going to use XPath and combine it with this text to get to this unordered list here, just to be a little bit more strict on the element it's getting. CSS does come with a sibling selector, but the reason for using XPath is that I'm going to be using this text content to get one element and then get a closer element or get a different element from there. So here I'll get the text and to test this out, I'm going to use the dollar sign $x function and instead of button text, this is going to be, well, I was going to use the class name, but I think I'll just use a div and the text is going to be added strings. So we've got our first element there. Now I need to get the sibling of it. So I'm going to use following sibling. So instead of a UL, I'm going to do a div. Now that's going to get that element. And then inside of that div, I want to get the UL. And then finally, I don't want just that UL. I want all the items on it. So I'll do an li there. And so now I've got all my list items. So this is my wonderfully complex element selector. And this is why I would highly recommend using either an ID on this UL or a unique attribute that has a unique identifier in it. So I'm going to go back into here and paste that in. I'm going to change this over to be two dollar signs and change this to be added strings. And then I'll come back over to my test. So this is going to get the string elements and I believe I can run get text and that's going to return my strings. So let's just log out those strings and let's see what comes of it. And then I'm also going to just, I only want to run this second test to make this a little bit quicker. Page.addedStrings.getText is not a function. The error I had with getText is that it doesn't support checking against multiple elements. It only supports checking against one element, which is a little strange. To rework this, I'm going to store my strings in an array, then use a for each. Okay, so this is going to add each of these strings in. And you know, this does add a little bit of extra logic to it, which I'm not crazy about. But if I come back down here, and I do a for each here, then I get the added string. And I'm also gonna get the index of that string. Then I'm going to do my assertion, expect the added string to equal strings and the index that we're checking against. So what this does, it gets the two items returned from added strings, the two list items. It loops through them using for each. In for each, we're defining a new function. That function takes two parameters, the string which isn't actually the string, it's the element reference for this list item, and then the index of that element inside of this entire array. And I expect the added string to equal the string that matches in my array that I defined up here. So I'll come back into my desktop app and run this one more time and cross my fingers that it works did not because I needed to run get text. There we go, we do have it passing now. There's one other thing I wanna talk about in this test and it has to do with the freshness of this property on this page object. If I add another string to my input and then basically run the same um, assertion referencing the last item, the test should pass. But if I were to have saved this reference and then tried to use it after I add another string, the test is going to fail. You can say it says it can't get the property get text because of undefined. And the reason is when I save this reference, it looks at the page and gets all the LIs. At that point, I haven't added the foo the foo baz string. And so there's only those two results, not the three results that we need 
to have the foo as. So that's one of the things that's important about these page objects is that when you reference them, they actually run this as a function at that time and return the value from there. So it's always best to reference your page objects directly instead of trying to store them as variables if you have any sort of dynamic test where it adds stuff after the fact. Well, that's about all the time I have for this video. It took a little bit longer than I was hoping to get things set up, but we ran across some issues that hopefully will help you in your day-to-day -day testing. And I think if enough people find value out of this video, maybe I'll do a, a follow-up one finishing the, the final two tests. They shouldn't be all that much different. We're going to, instead of adding strings, we'll remove the string by clicking the remove button. One thing there is getting the reference to that item, the, the remove button item. And then um, the last one of resetting all the settings shouldn't be too difficult either. As always, if you have any questions or comments or ideas for other videos, feel free to add a comment. And thanks as always for watching. Have a good one.